can you tell me like what what's the you know some of them was like what's the secret what what is it is it leaning into it is it is it letting go like you know it's a it, it's a, a few things we are strong we are strong within a legacy now start your own she to the top we say number one motivated dedicated let's go thank you so much and taking the time out of your busy day you have four boys right yes oh my god and are you are you canadian yes oh okay like <laughs> born born and raised Yes, yeah, so I was yeah born and raised Canadian, and then I moved to Florida with right before my fourth son, and okay. I gave birth to him in Florida. Oh my god! Wow. So now you're in Florida. Yes. Okay. Great. Oh, awesome. Like so cool. All right. So this is Legacy Along. She <laughs> is the natural birth queen. <laughs> yeah. So. Tell me about like your journey and your evolution into, you know, being the natural birth queen and having all of these amazing videos that women go to on YouTube. How did it all get started? So, well, first of all, I love your energy. <laughs> I love it. Um, so it started way, way back. It was about four years ago. Um, and I find it through discovering my purpose and fulfilling my, my purpose through the journey, this journey. Um, I gave birth to all of them naturally at home. And so I was obviously in, in the whole unmedicated home birth field. And um, through that process of giving birth at home with the kids, I found my purpose. And so God was talking to me and he was like, birth, birth is your lane. And I was just like, no, at first I was like, no, I don't want to do that. That's a lot of work. It's going to be tough. Like, can you give me something else to do? <laughs> um, but eventually I was like, okay, um, I'll listen. I'll listen to my purpose. And so I went down um, that journey. I still remember when I had like 12 YouTube subscribers, when I had no clients, um, and I still remember when I had my first, my first client and when I, and I got my first client, I was jumping up and I was so excited and, uh, she gave birth. I, um, I cried, like I was so emotional because it was like full circle moment in realizing that I was happy for them. Of course, so happy that everything went smoothly for her, happy for their family. And I believed in them when they lost faith in themselves. And it affirmed my purpose to God because he showed me my purpose. I listened and it was proof that I was able to fulfill in my purpose. So, mm. so you, were you, you were a doula, you, you gave birth to your first child. Then did you become a doula after that? I became a doula after my third. So after my third birth. So I used to post videos on YouTube for free for like three years. <laughs> it was just it was all about just showing other moms like I always wanted to have different ethnicities all different types of women so that they can see themselves in the in these births and know that if she can do it then then they could do it too mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. during that time I was just posting videos and then after my third birth that's when I became a certified doula and that's when I started three years later that's when I started doing clients wow was your first video the birth of your first son no oh no because that got a lot of views I got the most views on your channel yeah 1.8 yeah. million yeah. yeah yeah okay the the one that has the most views is actually my third birth yes and um I used to have another channel where I posted my second birth but that channel was actually a family channel. So when I started off, I was actually doing family vlogs. Okay. And then, and then I, 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 I switched. Um, once I became like into birth and became a doula, that's when I switched into legacy birth. And I created a whole new channel for legacy birth. Wow. That's amazing. I love that. Yeah. So well, one of the, the, the main videos that you have on, on your channel, you're going through 
your birth process and the course you teach. Yes. And you're totally, you know, you're, you're dancing and every, I definitely was not like that with, with Bjorn <laughs> um, at home, but it was just amazing to, to watch you and see yourself walk yourself through it you know, with your, your little boys and, and your husband, it was really, really cute. And I got teary um, when you're in, in the tub and, and your, your son just hugged you around, around your head. And I thought it was just so sweet. Yeah. So tell me about like, you know, bringing children into the space. Cause I feel like that, that, that could be a question that sometimes comes up like, Oh my God, I don't know if I want my children to watch, like, tell me your thoughts. Right. Right. That's a good point. And I have actually never told this story before, but I was just thinking about it the other day. So I guess I'll, I guess I'll say it now. <laughs> um, basically when I was a child, um, my mom, she was about to have my sister and I was very involved in the pregnancy. I was so excited. I was always writing names about her. Um, I was probably like five or six years old and one day they like said, okay, you're going to your grandparents' house. And I went there and I just felt so worried. I was like, what is going on? And I was, I was scared, but I was just, I just wanted to know if my mom was going to be okay. And um, I think about a day or two later, they ended up bringing me to the hospital and they were like, she's here. <laughs> Here's your baby sister. And yeah, I was excited that I was like, okay, yes, that's my baby sister. And now it all makes sense why my mom was gone and I didn't know where she went, but I did feel slightly robbed of the whole experience. And I felt like I wasn't allowed to be a part of that life experience. And, uh, and I think that kind of played a role in me deciding that I wanted my kids to be a part of the birth because they're so involved in the pregnancy. Like they see the cakes, they, they go to the little midwife appointments or the gender reveal. Like the, it's so, even my kids, like they did the pregnancy test with me. So <laughs> it's like everything to them. And to think that like, right when it gets to the end, I'm like, no, like this is not for you. This is only for me. It just feels like, I would be robbing them of that experience. And I completely understand for some situations where it could be traumatic, like a hospital setting. But for my birth, like it's like a birthday party. So it's not scary for them at all. And so I'm able to one, bring them a part of that experience, but also teach them that they, they can see from their own mom and not learn from the outside world that birth is traumatic, that they can see, no, like my mommy gave birth at home and it was beautiful it was calm and and everything would be okay so mm -hmm. I think it's so important for for children to to see it it's it's a family birth it's called a family <laughs> birth for a reason right yeah and you gave birth um unassisted as well right yeah yeah planned <laughs> unassisted yeah there was no way I I would have wanted it I can't imagine any other way it just went so perfect Mm -hmm. yeah it was it was really magical I mean we even had I had my in-laws and my mom ask like you sure you don't want me to be there and I was like no I think <laughs> I would have acted differently I wouldn't be able to act freely and walk buck naked around my house like you know <laughs> yo well tell me about what what is your background or ethnicity yes so of course I'm Canadian my mom and my dad are Canadian but my background like their parents are Caribbean so oh. Trinidad Barbados okay yeah. Okay. Do you know, like, what's the birth culture like? Like, is your grandma from Trinidad and Barbados or is it your great grandmother from there? It would be my, yeah, my grandma. So okay. my grandparents are from the Caribbean. Um, the birth culture, I would say is probably similar to the, where are you from? My parents are from Thailand and then I'm from LA. Okay. Born and raised, yeah. Yeah, good. So it's similar to US, I would say in Canada, where um, it can go either way. It's like you can trust the medical system. You can trust that things are going to be okay. It can either be okay, or it can end up in a C-section or, or a traumatic birth experience. So very, very similar to, to that. Yeah. And so with you having you know, having four unassisted home births, 
your mom, did she have you and I mean, your sister was at the hospital. Were you born at the hospital too? Like what, did you know anyone personally that had a home birth, whether with a midwife or an assistant? Right. So my mom, she had all four natural, no, no medication, but they were all in a hospital birth. Um, and so I was been the first in my family to have a home birth and definitely the first to have an unassisted birth. Um, but yeah, there wasn't, there was nobody to look to that was like, um, oh yeah, she had an unassisted birth when, when I did it. So a lot of people were like shocked, but that was the point. Like when I gave, when I give birth, I'm giving birth also for my sisters, for my children, for my grandchildren, so that they can learn from from my experience and and know that they can do it too and even if they don't want to give birth like that that they don't see it as like a traumatic a traumatic birth experience mm. yes. yeah it's uh it's are, are you younger than your sister who's who's oh well, you're older yes, so you yes, just yes. have one younger sister i only i have one younger sister and i have one step um half sister and i don't have a daughter either so hope you know so hopefully hopefully somebody learns something <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so all of those birth videos that's on your YouTube channel, are they, they're your clients that you've helped? So some are. So when I started off, I would reach out to people. Um, and at first it was like non-existent to see unassisted births on YouTube, like four years ago. So, I mean, you can see them on Instagram, but on YouTube, it was like, what? There was um, one video where like there was mom giving birth in nature and she was like completely naked and it was said like 12 years ago. <laughs> so that was like the only one. Um, and so at first it was really hard to find videos. But now that um, over the years, like I think that I do have a lot to do with like sending set, setting that trend or adding to that and making moms feel comfortable with sharing it because they could have there could have been but they probably felt scared to share something like that um so it's really nice to see births now like I see them way more often now on YouTube um but yeah in the beginning I used to just reach out and I would ask if they wanted to be featured on the account and they would say yes and now like when I reach out people are like they're like I watch your videos or like some of them will say like um you helped me with my other birth or stuff like that so it's really such a humbling and beautiful experience now like um but some moms reach out to me some are clients and some moms like if it's in a really amazing birth that I that pops up on my screen I I will reach out yeah that's so cool <laughs> you quoted you said I am the Michael Jordan of giving birth <laughs> I love that. So can you, can you share with me, like, you know, briefly the differences in, in all of your births hmm. and yeah. what that was like for you? Yeah. I like that you asked that because going from saying Michael Jordan from giving birth, was it, was it always that way or was it a, a progression? Um, Cause like birth for me now is easy, but at the beginning it was hard. But once I built up the skills and the certain habits, now I've like mastered it. So it's easy for me now. Um, for my first birth experience, uh, I was a teen mom for my first birth. And so it was a bit tough because like I wanted to do it at home and I wanted to also have a lotus birth. I know you're familiar with lotus birth as well. You had a lotus birth? I did. Oh, nice. Yeah, I totally did. Loved it. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> yes awesome um so yeah they were like looking at me like I was crazy and so having that stigma of people seeing things in a certain way and also being young was a little bit challenging in the beginning um but I had to stay firm and hold my ground and learn how to tell people what I'm doing and make sure that I'm saying it in a way where they know that I'm educated and that I'm informed and I'm not just like first time mom doesn't know anything and just saw some things online that she that she wants to do. Um, so once I got through that, 
I had, I gave birth. I ended up having a successful home birth with a midwife and I had a successful Lotus birth. And after that experience, I was basically able to build up a track record. So I was like, okay, like, look, I did this. Um, so my second birth, they didn't challenge me as much. Um, but with my second birth, that's how I knew that I wanted to have an unassisted birth because I was always finding myself always asking for as little intervention as possible. Um, I remember I wrote my birth plan and I was like, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. And they were like, so basically you just want us to stand there and do nothing. And I'm like, basically. <laughs> and so um, that birth is on YouTube as well. And that one, I was very, very calm as well. Um, it was an OP baby. So it was uh, harder to push baby out, but I obviously make it look so effortless. And then third, um, third was the one where I was wearing the birth queen shirt, the white one like that. And that was my first unassisted birth. And that is when I was really able to feel birth in a pleasurable way. I was able to understand oxytocin, how it's a feel good hormone that's released from the body and it makes your contractions feel good. And so that one, I was able to enjoy my labor. Um, and then my fourth one, that was the legendary birth with, with my fourth baby. Absolutely legendary. That's when I would say I mastered the skill of giving birth. Um, and I think you've probably seen yourself. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, tell, can you tell me like, what, what's the, you know, someone was like, well, what's the secret? What, what is it? Is it leaning into it? Is it, is it letting go? Like, you know, it's a, it, it's a, a few things. Um, I wouldn't say it's one specific thing. A lot of it is. So a lot of people think that birth is painful but birth is not really designed to be painful. Birth is technically designed to feel good because if oxytocin is a feel-good hormone that's released during cuddling, intimacy, breastfeeding, if a feel-good hormone is released during our contractions, then, and it plays a primary role in our contractions, then God has designed the process to feel good. And if we think of how we make our babies, when we make our babies, it's a pleasurable experience, right? When we're mm -hmm. with our, or our partners. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I always think of it as the way in is the way out. So if it's a pleasurable experience to create a baby, it should be a pleasurable experience to birth a baby. So I allow myself to open up the same way that I would do in intimacy to allow a pleasurable experience to be possible. And then I reverse the psychology of pain by saying it feels good. So this feels so good because the words that we say can change how we feel. If we're like, oh my God, not another one, then that's how our body's going to react. But when we say the word yes, our, we actually send a endorphins to our body and we tell our body that we're in a feel good state. Say yes, another contraction. And it feels amazing. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It feels so good. Like, oh, look at that. More of my water broke. And it felt amazing. Yes. And so I'm always just like, yes, this feels so good. I love oxytocin and stuff like that. Oh my God. I love that. Oh yeah. Like yeah. you look like you want to give birth again after yes. that. Yeah, I do. I can't wait. I can't wait. In, in two more years, I, well, <laughs> I'll, I'll be getting pregnant, but yeah, I, I can't wait. Um, <laughs> so what's the, what's the number one fear or concern you get from women who are interested in a home birth home birth or unassisted birth well I guess both <laughs> both so for there's different ones for for each for each okay. I would say. um for home birth the main thing is pain 
Like that's the number one thing I usually hear is like, I don't know if I'll be able to handle the pain. Um, and so I always tell them like what I told you earlier that mm -hmm. birth can be a pleasurable experience and like reversing the psychology of pain and mastering that so that pain is like, you shouldn't even be saying the word pain, but there's also a lot of people who are like a pleasurable or a painless birth isn't necessarily possible. And if you have that mindset too, then you're also already canceling yourself out because you have to have an open mind. A lot of the clients who I've had who were able to have a pleasurable birth, when I say pleasurable birth, they believe it. Like they believe it's possible for them. Those are the ones who are able to do it. And then for, for um, home births, a lot of people go through like thinking a home birth is dangerous. Um, but if you're low risk, every you have you do the correct work before mindset preparation, then it can be a safe experience, no different than than a hospital. And honestly, it leads to less intervention, anyways. Mm -hmm. So, do you do you do group coaching and one on one? I do, yeah, both. Okay, mm -hmm. and how long are do you cover? Yeah. How long are your group courses or group coaching? So it depends. Like I usually do any moms that are in first trimester, second trimester, third trimester. So they, they just join at different times and then they give birth in the program with me virtually. And then after um, the birth, I'm still with them through postpartum as well. And some clients will be through postpartum, like just the first six weeks. And some clients after they give birth, um, we go right into fitness and getting back our bodies back. Yeah. Can you like talk to me, like touch on, um, you know, some women are like, no, I need someone here with me. But it's like, I feel like it's not necessary. Like virtual is just as, mm -hmm. as amazing and helpful. Yes. So that's a really good point because it's so new it can be so, so, so personal. It's almost like being on FaceTime with your mom and it feels like they're right there with you. Like I've had clients who they'll put their phone right by, right by, down by their private parts. You see their private parts by their butt, mucus plug. If, if there's like blood dripping, is that, is that, an, is that okay? Um, they'll show you the blood that's from the placenta. Is, is that, is that normal? Um, so it literally feels like it's right there with you and you're there through the entire process. So it becomes like a sister, almost like a family member. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think most women just want reassurance. Mm -hmm. that, that's all they really need. That's all I really needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not necessarily someone there. So yeah, I think it's, it's great. I mean, this day and age and, and we live in, you know, we, I think we can reach more, more women. Yeah. You want to give birth at home. Yes. Yeah. And birth doesn't always, sometimes being alone scares some moms. And a lot of people think that unassisted birth has to be alone, but it doesn't necessarily have to be alone. Like you can have a doula present still. Like you can have a doula there. That's still considered an unassisted birth. You can have family members. You can have your partner. Um, so you don't have to be alone. Like you can still feel supported and loved throughout the process if you want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I was listening to some podcasts and they always do like a before talking to them during pregnancy and then like how they want to have their birth. And they, a lot of them say, I want to have a home birth. And most of the time I hear that it's with licensed midwives and then it's the after and they're like, oh, I transferred. Why do you think low-risk women I mean women in general maybe why do you think they end up transferring so it could be for a lot of different reasons some of them are legit reasons but some of them aren't and I think that it has a lot to do with training values and beliefs so a lot of the time moms do a lot of mindset work they prepare they get ready for the birthing experience but not a lot of midwives freshen up and do mindset work as well. And it's actually very important because everyone goes through different emotions during the birthing process, not just the mom. So even when a midwife is there, 
she is also having to go through different fears and limiting beliefs in her mind that she has to overcome. And so if she sees something that happens, if she believes that it's a hiccup, that that can only be solved with medical attention, then she's going to go down that route. Um, but if she if she doesn't have the knowledge to know like different alternatives to 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 assess the situation, then that's why sometimes she, because of that fear of not knowing what to do, she will just transfer it to a hospital. Yeah, I I, I feel that it's um it's so it's so unfortunate, you know, especially if they're if there really is no true emergency, I think a lot of women just need that support saying, no, we're going to, we're going to stay. You're doing fine. You're doing great. You're just tired. You can do it. Yes. It's so true because a lot of the times it's not really a medical intervention. It's just a different variation of birth just because it looks a bit different. Doesn't mean that. So for example, breach, breach birth, some people consider breech birth that needs medical attention. Some people would say that you have to get a C-section for a breech birth. So if a midwife believes that, if that's her values and her beliefs, then if that were to come up, even if for a second and she thinks that, then she's going to transfer. But if she, if you have a midwife or a doula who believes that breech birth is just a different variation of birth, baby will come out just like it comes out the other way, but it'll one contraction at a time, feet will come out, legs will come out, bum will come out, rest of the body will come out. Then she will go through the process with her and, 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 be, and, and support her through that journey. So it really depends on the midwife's training, her values, her beliefs. And it's important for moms to really know what you're, who you're bringing into your space and what values and beliefs that they have. And just because they say that this is not normal or going past 42 weeks is not normal. It doesn't mean that that has to be your belief. So it's important, like, even though you have a midwife or, your, or a doula, you know their beliefs, but you also have to know your beliefs so that when certain things come up, you can stand your ground. So can you share about your new projects? I see that you are, you have like a, what is it, a doula wealth coaching program? Yeah. Tell me about that. So that one is for doulas, aspiring doulas and birth workers um, going full time so that they can turn their business into their, their, their purpose into a, an actual business. A lot of moms, they like me, it's their purpose. Um, just like you, how you have your platform. It's something that you feel like you're walking in your purpose, something so, so special to you. And just to be able to help moms be able to take that full time and actually be um, profitable, like like what I've done is um, basically what I help other people do. Did you have mentors as well to help you get into this whole business aspect of it? Yeah, so I also, ha I also do mentorship as well. And it's important because I'm always, I'm, I like to teach, but I also love to be a student as well. Um, I always say to my kids, like the person who says they know it all, they, they're actually the beginners. They actually don't know as much as you think they do, but the person who's constantly learning, constantly wants to be better. Those are the people who will one day become the masters because there's no ceiling to how much you can learn. And like, I don't, I don't like to like not know stuff. So I love having mentors I love investing in mentorship and yeah. <laughs> yeah it's it's so important I mean I look at athletes they don't get to the top on their own they have, right. coaches. They have coaches. Right. yeah yeah exactly uh can, let's talk about you you coined the term MBP which is media's birth perception yes media sure. yeah perception mm -hmm. so you know what's funny like when I came up with that term, I had no idea that everyone was going to love it so much. Like every time someone talks to me, they're like, yes, MVP, media's birth perception. I'm like, oh, it really, really stuck. <laughs> um, 
But basically, like from since I was a little girl, I've been unknowingly learning to perceive birth as fearful, whether it was in a movie, whether it was in a TV show, it was always the mom screaming in the hospital and everything turning out bad. And there was always fear surrounding it. I wanted to switch that because whether you know it or not, we all consume that information um, like through all the movies that we've seen. And so I've decided to get rid of MBP, which is media's birth perception by replacing it with positive birth stories, like the ones that like you see on my YouTube channel and being able to see moms giving birth in a positive way in, in a way that's not scary or not fearful helped to empower me. Because when I was having my second birth, I watched birth videos all the time because birth videos are like medicine. It shows people like, oh, I can do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so that's why it was so important to me because I realized that like when I want, you can, you can hear all the stories from your grandparents saying it's scary, it's scary, it's scary, it's scary, it's bad, bad, bad. But then you go on YouTube and you watch this and you're like, this doesn't look scary. This actually looks quite fun. <laughs> And so just being a part of that and being able to get rid of that is, is important. And it helps to get rid of the fear of birth too. Yeah, it's so unfortunate what we do see on TV and in movies, mm -hmm. but at least there, there's YouTube and Instagram for, for right. women to share right. positive birth videos. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I also think it's just like, it's entertainment, right? It's more, they find it more entertaining to see a woman like, screaming and everything end up ending up bad um versus a mom who's like tranquil and and very 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 peaceful but it's funny because I'm noticing now there's a switch so now when you see like a thumbnail of a mom who's like tranquil and peaceful you're like oh what's that juicy thing right there <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah yeah yep. yep, yep. <laughs> how has how was postpartum for you with with legend being away from family being in the states it was the best postpartum ever <laughs> it yeah was the best postpartum ever because of the sunshine because of the daylight um I'm very very independent when it comes to like mothering anyways so I wasn't really like sad about not having family members around um and my husband also works from home too. So that's our, like, it's like a really like teamwork. What's your vision for the future? What, how do you want legacy birth to look? Like, do you have a long-term vision? I do want legacy birth to be like a massive platform. I do want to reach as many women as possible. In the United States, 32% of births are done by C-section and 17% of them are unnecessary. So my major goal is to bring that percentage down. There are some countries that are at like 9%, which would be amazing. I think that to achieve a goal like that, we would really have to come together because one person is powerful, but a group of women, a tribe, will make the movement so much bigger. And then 25% of women are is estimated to have a traumatic birth. So out of 10 women, two, two to three of them would have a traumatic birth experience. So that's something that, to me, that's the main goal. That's walking in purpose, like being able to change that. Mm, mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And so before we go off, like, can you share with women who are interested in wanting to, you know, get coaching from you. Tell me what you offer for the pregnancy program. It's if you're in your first, second or third trimester, or you're planning a vaginal birth, a natural birth, a home birth, VBAX, um, unassisted birth or birth center birth, then that program would be for them. And what's cool is I'm so confident in my process that when you give birth in my program, like if your birth doesn't go as planned, then I work with them for free. So there's no risk to them. Like my goal is to serve and provide results. And if I don't do that, then to me, I don't, I feel like 
I didn't really deserve that client really. Um, so that's with the pregnancy program. And then for the coaching program, it's for doulas and aspiring doulas and birth workers. So I'll help them go full-time within 90 days. And if they aren't able to go full-time in 90 days, then I work with them for free for the entire year until they do. Just cool with the doula program is because a lot of doulas are still in person and it's okay to be in person. You can still do in person too, but technology changes everything. So if you can go from being having just like one client to many clients all around the world, so you're able to have a bigger impact and serve in a bigger way. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Oh my God. I want to connect with you more. You would be so cool to like hang out with in person. <laughs> well, our kids are legend is Bjorn is almost one years old. So it's like they're the same oh, age. Yeah. Yeah. Very, yeah. What month was he born? April 30th. Yeah. Legend was born in March. So they are okay. really close. April yeah. 30th. That's yeah. Literally right before May. Yep. Oh, that's him. Okay. Oh, thank you so much, Legacy, for taking the time out of your busy day <laughs> to talk with me. I'm so grateful for you. We are strong, we are strong. Building a legacy, now start your own. Straight to the top, we say number one. Motivated, dedicated, let's go. We